Hi, this is Brendan Davis from Bedrock Games and the Bedrock Blog, and I'm here with Dion for another episode of Wuxia Weekend. And tonight we're going to be doing Kung Fu Craze movies. We're talking about The Chinese Boxer. This is a 1970 film starring Jimmy Wang Yu and Lo Lie, and it was also directed by Jimmy Wang Yu, who's famous for being the one-armed swordsman in films like that, um, also in The Assassin. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, I've talked about this movie on the channel before, um, and I probably have discussed it on the blog, but I think this is me and Dion's first discussion of the film, as far as I know. It actually gets difficult for us. We had to go back and check to make sure there wasn't any prior discussions. Um, but as far as I know, this is our first conversation. Um, Dion, what did you think of this movie? I want, I want to get your opinion before we get into any of the details of it. I thought it was a typical kung fu movie. Uh... It wasn't, there wasn't anything spectacular about it. Let's just put it that way. Okay. That was it? Nothing else? That was no, it. Okay. So, so yeah, so I mean, obviously, and just for people who don't know, this is like the movie that kind of, as far as I know, this is the one that launched the Kung Fu craze. So it's kind of, it's got like all, all of the DNA of Kung Fu movies is in this one. And it kind of makes sense that that would be your reaction to it too. Cause it is kind of like, it's just the standard Right, like it's if you've seen a kung fu movie, this is sort of the standard. It does a couple of things a little bit different. Like there's a little bit more. There are a few moments that kind of veer into like Japanese or Western movies. Do you know what I mean in this one? But but and I and I feel like I feel like some of the violence is particularly visceral in this movie too. It stands out for those two reasons in my mind. Um, But. But yeah, I, I like this movie. I, I, I really enjoy it. Uh, you know, what I like about it is the the grotesque violence and and the simplicity of the plot and the fact that the whole school gets wiped out. It's not just the master. You know, it's not it's not like his brother. The whole school gets wiped out. So I like the grandiosity of the revenge plot. Um but there's a lot of familiar elements in this. There's even stuff... I feel like this movie lifts from even some of the earlier films that Jimmy Wang Yu was in. Like in, in One-Armed Swordsman, it opens with him chopping wood. And his introduction mm -hmm. in this scene, he's in a quarry, like cutting stone. And then we have like a scene later where he's chopping wood that feels like it's almost exactly the scene taken from One-Armed Swordsman. Not in terms of the character drama, but just in terms of the stuff that he's doing physically. Really? Yeah. So, um, so I don't know, w let's, let's get into why this movie didn't work for you. Is there, can you expand a little bit on, on any of the details of stuff that you really didn't like about it? I wouldn't say that it didn't work for me. I just wasn't impressed with it. And I didn't realize that it was a 1970s movie until mm. like a couple months ago when I looked it up. When did you think you know, it came out? What, what year would you have pinned it to if it... I had pinned it as early 70s, but not 1970. I was thinking oh, okay. maybe 71 or 72 mm -hmm. because it reminded me so much of Hapkido with Angela Mao yep. that, you know, I didn't know which film came first and I just didn't bother to look and see which one did until like a couple minutes ago. Okay. So, um, yeah, uh, it just, they were very similar to me and... But very, very different. Mm -hmm. Now, now I'm guessing also you've all you've always kind of had a little bit. Not not a ha hatred's the wrong word or dislike is the wrong word, but you've always been a little bit I think suspicious of Jimmy Wang Yu, right? Like there's always been like a, a little like, right? Like am I am I incorrect or am I, am I projecting onto you something that you didn't say before? No, you you're right. Um, and, I'm not a big big fan of his. And I guess you have to take what you read and interviews that you hear online with his co-stars with a grain of salt because, um, I don't know, his characters always seem very arrogant to me. Yeah, I, I would and, say so. I'd say that's a fairly typical Jimmy Wang Yu character <laughs> trait in his movies, yeah. And um, from what I've read and heard in interviews of co-stars that's the kind of person he was okay so that wasn't like a really 
You know, it was it was easy for him to have be arrogant in a movie if that's what it called yeah. for because that was his personality. And, and there are a lot of action stars that are sort of like that, where the the appeal is that you feel like you're getting the person that's on the screen. Maybe like you cut like like if you meet Clint Eastwood, you sort of hope that he's like Clint Eastwood in the movies, right? Right. Um. So, but what I was wondering is, do, do you think the fact that Jimmy Wang you directed this impacted your enjoyment of it? Because because one thing I did notice is not, and and I actually did like a lot of the direction, but you can't help but tell like you you can you can see that the star of the movie is also the director. Do you know what I mean? So so you're getting the full Jimmy Wang Yu treatment. Do you know what I mean? Like you're really getting you're kind of getting his point of view on top of everything else. Well, see for me, I didn't realize he had directed it either oh, until two okay. minutes ago. Okay. Okay. I, I really don't look at any information about. That's the movie totally fine. That's totally fine. The synopsis before I actually watch it, unless I already know who directed it, like we've discussed. Mm. Yeah. We didn't yeah. discuss that he was the director of this movie beforehand. But usually, when we discuss what we're going to do, mm. we'll say, "Well, how about we try so and so's movie?" Yeah. Such and yeah. such. So I already know who the director is. This time, I didn't even bother to to well, ask. Well, in hindsight, does that does that explain anything that you saw on the screen to you or no? No, because he was, he was the main, the main man. So it was very heavily centered on him. And I think he gave equal time to the Japanese characters. Okay. So, you know, I would have never have known. I don't even know who I would have thought had, directed this really it's got i mean it's i I like the directing style it's kind of it's a little bit stylistic at points with like the zoom in shots do you know what i mean Mm -hmm. and i like the way the violence is handled tong kai was the action director but i feel i like him he's really great there's a lot of people getting their eyes gouged out there's a lot of people getting like punched and then like you can tell internal things are going on as the fists are rotating but it's all kind of grounded and like you know the the closest thing that you get to wuxia elements is a little bit of the lightness kung fu when he leaps over that wall do you remember that scene right. where he, mm-hmm. you know but but for the most part it's kind of just you know bang bang like you know fists against fists it's judo karate and kung fu basically right. um so so what did you think of lolie and the the japanese uh side of the movie was, was how did you feel about that stuff I thought that, um, well, the Japanese are always portrayed as arrogant and greedy in these movies. And I thought they did a good job of portraying the Japanese. There was just something about Lo Lie's character that was kind of odd to me. And I think it was in some of the shots, his body shape was weird. Like he had been padded up on the top half. Because I don't remember him being that broad-shouldered. And this is an early film. And a lot of the things that I've seen him in have come later. But to me, he looked like he was wearing some kind of like shoulder pads or like oh. the top half of his body was padded at certain angles. So he looked like huge, but then his lower half was kind of small. I don't okay. know. It was just weird to me. I mean, and he's... the hair... You don't. You didn't like the hair. The the. I did not like the hair. That was magnificent hair, Dion. I got it. That was, that was. That's one of my favorite parts wig. of this movie. I know, but that is one of my favorite things in this movie. Is the is the hairstyle of Lolier's character. Um, it's horrible. It just fits. It fits the care. The like. So, so so what? I don't know if he had shoulder pads on or not. I mean, he is kind of a wider build i've always you know he's kind of got like thick wrists and he looks like whenever i watch these movies i always kind of size up people's physicality a little bit and Mm -hmm. he feels like a solid person but i don't know how wide his shoulders are offhand and i can't i don't i can't say that i was really looking at the shoulders in those scenes so i don't know um that's definitely a possibility but when his character is introduced did you notice the scene where he's just staring down the whole time uh-huh. Like if you watch that, if you so this time around, I watched his face the whole scene because like I want to like pay attention to like like normally you're watching the guy talk and you just are aware that he's just staring down. He maintains this like frozen frozen expression for, for that entire scene until he's talking. Um, and I I, th- I so I feel like he's got like a 
I don't know. He's like he's like a villain from a western or something. Do you know what I mean? That's kind of what he feels like in this movie to me. Um, and the hair, I, I don't. That. And the hair just kind of adds to it. It's, it. It adds like the vanity factor that isn't conveyed in the diet. Do you know what I mean? It's like a this guy is. You can tell he's vain because his hair is kept in this way. It's kind of a I don't know, like a poofy sort of. It's obviously colored in some way. Do you know I, mean? I don't think that's supposed to be his yeah, natural it's coloring. it's brown and it's parted on the side and yeah. it's very poofy, almost. Almost looks reddish, right? It almost has like a yeah, copper a reddish, look. Yeah, like an auburn color. Yeah, that's it. And it's just, it's just like, no. <laughs> it's just, it, that didn't work for me. That was a. A distraction. I almost couldn't take him seriously. <laughs> but once he started fighting, you had to take him seriously because the man's yeah. got some moves. Well, he's ferocious in this movie. He's he, not only is he ferocious; he's almost unhinged. When, you know, when when this almost. yeah. Well, he is unhinged when he goes like everything is preceded with a scream, and then he just like breaks breaks stuff apart. Do you know? He just and yes. so one of the things this movie does is it tries to it sort of establishes that kung fu is a particular way and karate in contrast is aggressive it's all about lethal attacks you know full commitment to the lethal strike and it's also about like having you know very powerful hands how they break you know the board breaking and all that is brought in at, to demonstrate how powerful their hands are so in a lot of the scenes there'll be walls that are just all long boards and they're just smashing them as they're missing the guy to kind of emphasize Show all that. that power yeah, yeah. and i liked the history lesson that the master was trying to impart to his students after the um, the first Japanese guy came alone and he had sat them down and said, look, uh, karate had its roots in, um, in Chinese Kung Fu, but when the Japanese took it from them, they added a perversion of making it all about the lethal strike because he was trying to say how the different uh, styles of Kung Fu were meant for self-defense, for clearing your mind, and yada, yada, all these good, positive things. But when the Japanese got a hold of it, then they changed it to mean something that was more corrupt and more perverse than what it intentionally had been and and also so, oh go ahead go ahead no you go ahead i was just gonna say we are simplifying the plot a little bit because it's not purely japanese versus chinese there's a chinese character who studies japanese martial arts and is working with the japanese right so it's like a uh and he's and and he's the one that's got the he's sort of the brains of the operation who's right. help you know establish like basically the plot is they want to take over the town. Yeah, they want to take over the town, start a gambling hall, like siphon money out of this place. In order to do that, they have to take out the kung fu school because the kung fu school could pose a threat to them, could you know resist them, and so that's the first thing they want to go after. So that's why he brings in these Japanese people, and and I think he knows judo or something, right? Isn't that his his background is judo? Or am I mistaken? Yeah, he no, he knows judo, but then he says when he leaves the school. After being beaten up by the master, he says, I'm going to bring some karate um, masters back and we'll ruin your school. And uh, and so they take over. They start a gambling hall. You know, they, they wipe out the school. They kill the master. The only one that either isn't killed or flees is Jimmy Wang Yu's character, Lei Ming, and the daughter of the of the master of the school. Uh, what was her name? Uh, Li Sao Ling, right? It was uh, Wang Ping's character. Uh, yeah, I think so. Hold on. But they're the they're left together, and then he has to train, and he remembers something his master had said about you know he had asked if a if a kung fu expert could beat a karate expert, and the master said if he was agile and if he had hands like iron. Iron, could, yeah. yeah. And so the rest of the movie is Jimmy Wang Yu, uh, you know, developing his iron hands by doing the thing where they heat the pellets in the in the big. Uh, like giant walk and just keep striking it until their hands are strong, I guess. And he puts weights on his legs and runs around and jumps over things until he's agile enough. Um, you know, it's, it's not the most realistic <laughs> training plan to beat a karate expert, but it makes like a certain cinematic sense of these are the things you have to do before you can take on the Japanese 
right. martial arts. And so then he becomes almost like a masked vigilante for a period in the film where he's going, he's sort of targeting the Japanese guys and going after them. And then he sets up like a final duel date where they're supposed to meet on a hill and fight. And the Chinese guy that's working with the Japanese sort of inserts a little sneaky ambush in the middle of the fight. Uh, but ultimately, Jimmy Wang Yu's character wins. But it's a little unclear if he survives or not, right? Because he's wounded in a pretty bad place. Right. But, and yeah, and the whole ending is very unclear. It didn't end the way that I thought it was going to end. But, you know. How did you think it was going to end? Well, I had the vision of, you know, the final duel on the hill. And he wins. But he goes back to town and collects his girlfriend so that she knows that he's alive. Yeah. Because remember, he had the plant. Well, she was worried that he wouldn't come back. Yeah. And he said he had a plan for that because he'd been thinking. And his big plan was for if he didn't come back, that she was to run. The, yeah, that's a big plan, dude. <laughs> you know, I was mad. I was like thinking he was going to have a a serious well thought out plan yeah. you need to leave town and go find such and such but no just run run like the wind baby <laughs> yeah just if run. i don't come back by nightfall run yeah the well the love story overall i mean I, I i did like some of the love story elements but it was sort of a secondary it aspect was very, it was almost um tertiary i mean cuz first you have the the Chinese versus Japanese, you have taking the revenge and then you have this love story. It's like the love story was just kind of thrown in there. It wasn't really completely thought out very well. Well, it has no conflict really, right? It's sort of a fully resolved lot. Like there's a little bit where she's kind of upset about the stuff going on at the school and worried, but it isn't like it creates any real drama between them. Right. And, and that could have all been left out for me. Yeah, and she's kind of by his side the whole time, so she's just sort of... It's sort of like... It's a little bit like the relationship he has with the woman in One-Armed Swordsman if there was no other elements to it except for the, you know, they're in love and she nurses him back to health kind of a thing. Um, right. So, uh, you know, I think I think the movie would suffer without her in it, but, like... It's not. It's obviously not the movie's focus. Is the point? It's. It's. It's definitely not. Uh, you. You do want to know if he goes back to her, but. But you almost feel like that ending. You know, I don't know. What. What did you think about that ending? What, like, did you feel that that he dies, or do you feel that he lives? I feel that he lives and limps back to town. Mm. Um. I don't know, just because of his complete total arrogance by saying that, you know, when she said he was worried, she was worried about him. He goes, well, I'm not, I'm, I'm going to win. But, you know, sometimes you're, well, one day your luck does run out, but not to me, basically is what he was saying, <laughs> you know, it's just like, okay, so he's going to like live in the end, even if they don't show it. Okay. So that led me to believe that he lived and limped back in the town for his woman. But, uh, yeah. Now, I, I gotta say, I do like how he dispatches with the bad guys. I like the whole, I'm, you know, sticking the hand all the way into the stomach kind of an attack. Where yeah. He just impales people with his hand. You know, that that's, you know, the, the violence in this I really like. I think that's maybe one of the best parts of the movie is the way the violence is handled. Um, and, you know, I, I enjoyed the tension that they built up in some of those scenes as well before the, like when he has the standoff with the guy with the shurikens in the, um, when he's surrounded by all the Japanese guys with katanas and stuff, mm -hmm. I thought that scene was pretty cool. Like, cause it's just sort of a, you know, again, it's sort of like a Clint Eastwood type thing. It's, it's that sort of a, a vibe. Um, and I, and I liked that this was like, that the stakes were high, that, that they came and it wasn't just like they killed one student or they hurt a bunch of students that they came and they killed people and they did it mercilessly. And, and there wasn't like the, what the fact that there wasn't a lot of time to linger on those details made, made the world that the characters lived in seem crueler to me. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so I thought that that, it just added weight to that part of the story. Um, but yeah, I don't know what, what, what about, um, 
I don't know. What about like the gambling hall stuff? Because that is also, you know, a comp- you know that's like a, I don't know B plot of the movie, or it's sort of you know it's it's right. It's. I think, I. I think I could have done without the rape scene. They could have mentioned it. I mean, it does give the movie more dramatic weight. But for me, if they had left it out and just had his girlfriend go back to him and just tell him that it would have been enough Yeah. for me. I didn't need to see all that. Well, this was also, well, yeah, we should say there's a very violent rape scene in this movie. Um, and, and it's like, it doesn't stop. You usually the norm in these films is like, you know, it happens somehow. Like the guy is sort of looming over her, but then it cuts away Right, and this was like they show a lot of it, and this was like clothes and everything. Yeah, this was like start to finish. This was like everything. You see the whole thing. Um, So it's it's. I think they did it to add like a sense of like like you were saying, like just make it give it more weight or give it more, make him more evil. Um, Yes, but it didn't. It wasn't really required. It would have worked if they had just cut away. I think before it actually happened, or if they had found out about it. Especially because these are characters you're not really that familiar with, anyways. When it's going, you know, you, you yeah, you don't you meet the husband in the gambling hall, and they think that he's cheating them, and you, I got the. Did they think that, or was I thought that was just their scam? I thought they would just. I thought I thought it was their scam too, because I didn't get the feeling that he was cheating. I got the feeling that it was just his lucky day but then yeah. it really didn't turn out to be so lucky you no, he, know after his wife goes and pleads for his release yeah they, they really the, that couple really got shafted in the whole in the whole you know scheme of this movie um i think that uh yeah i i i saw that scene as they were just basically trying to establish number one how evil they were but also that the gambling hall was basically fixed, you know, that you really right. couldn't be, you know. And so, because he was the one guy we see beat the house, and then they just go right. and rob and him. At first, what I thought was going to happen, because you know me, I'm always thinking two steps ahead, was when he won all the money that he would, and he left, that he was going to go back to the back of the gambling ring and turn it in. Like, he was some kind of, like, plant that the money went to him so that people thought that they were playing mm-hmm. fairly. And when he left, he would just go around the corner and go back into the gambling house the back way and then hand in the money and, you know, get his little cut. But um, no, it, then it was like, oh, no, he's not doing that. He run that money, honestly. And that really made me feel like he wasn't cheating at all. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. And I think... um I don't know. I, th- I think that you know, the, it was useful to at least see what they were doing in the city. It gave you an idea of what their criminal enterprise was. I was actually kind of surprised how polite they were with each other, the villains. Do you know what I mean? They were fairly reasonable among themselves. Yes. Um, I you know, I, I, especially with the Lolier character, I felt he was he was somewhat hostile sometimes, but basically he was kind of going along with everything, and he was he seemed to defer to the business guys. Business yeah, acumen. Yeah, told him he was the brains of the outfit. Anyway, you you do what you got to do, and I'll back yeah. you up yeah. with the muscle. So, um, but yeah, so uh, I don't know. Is there anything else about this movie you wanted to get into, or have we covered everything that you think is important? I think we covered everything. All I right. mean, this movie was straightforward. There were no hidden plots, no question marks except for the ending, whether he lived or died. But it was pretty much straightforward. The plot was easy to follow. Uh, the characters were characters. They, I didn't find that they were three-dimensional, maybe two and a half. But, um, but yeah, it was just an easy-to-follow, typical story. Yeah, I wouldn't say three dimensional odd. This is not the kind of movie where you're going to get that sort of characterization. Um, what would you say? Uh, so why don't you do your rating and recommendation, and I'll do mine. I think, or do you want me to go first? Um, I can go first. 
I would give it a a two. I didn't turn it off. I did watch it twice mm -hmm. um, because we were supposed to do this last weekend. I had already watched it, but then I need to rewatch it again. Um, I probably won't go back and watch it again because once you see a Japanese versus <laughs> Japanese Kung Fu school or karate school or judo school or hapkido school versus the Chinese uh, Kung Fu school, you kind of seen them all. The only thing that usually changes is something in the middle where part of the plot, like, you know, this time there was a gambling hall involved and they wanted to take over the town and have keto that wasn't there. So, you know, and training sequences change, but it's pretty much straightforward plot. Um, but so I give it a two. I, I didn't feel invested mm -hmm. heavily in the movie. The characters weren't 3D, but I, if you're a Jimmy Wang Yu fan, I think you should watch it. Um, but, you know, it's kind of once you've seen this kind of movie, you've seen them all. So, so yeah, so I, I don't know. I, I, I'm sort of debating what number to give it in our current rating system. Um, I'm going I'm between a three and a four for me. Do you know what I mean? It's sort of, you know, it's, what? It's, yeah, yeah, between a three and a four. Now, here's the thing. I probably have to give it a three because I am hesitant to give it a four. And I feel like it's a three and a half movie, do you know what I mean? Which I guess mm -hmm. in our system, it's a three because it has to really hit that four mark to be a four. But I do really like it, so that's why I'm debating. Because if I give it a three, that's kind of like, well, it's like neutral, right? But right. if I give it a four, that gives it a certain... The expectation that people would have going in to see it might be higher than it should be. So I'm going to give it a three, but I want to give it an enthusiastic three, which is okay. to say it's a, um, uh, it's a, it's a, I think it's a really enjoyable movie. It's got a lot of nice stylized violence in it. It's, it's, it's groundbreaking in that it, you know, launched a whole craze of this genre of film. Um, you know, a lot, a lot of stuff that is familiar from the genre comes from this movie and, Jimmy Wang Yu, you know, brings that Jimmy Wang Yu presence. Now, it's different from a Bruce Lee movie, which is going to have, like, a real martial arts practitioner. You know, that you know, totally different kettle of fish when you're comparing those things. I think Jimmy Wang Yu does a really good job, especially with the hand strikes. But the, I thought, personally, the kicks were left something to be desired in, in some of the... Some of the some of the sequences, but Loli Loli A is good. Some of the other guys are really good, but it's not. It's it's still not like the best, you know, kung fu movie that you're gonna see in terms of the the fight scenes. It's just that the fight scenes are they're really good at at conveying that. I don't know what what to call it, but just that that sense you get when somebody's injured in a movie. Do you know what I mean? Just that that mm -hmm. sense of injury occurring with the fights and there's something kind of nice about the overall aesthetic of the fights. Even if occasionally you see a leg that doesn't look like it's kicking quite right or something like that. Um, and, and also it has, it has interesting departures from that with like the scene with the, with all the guys with the katanas. And um, I think there was another scene that was kind of similar. Um, you know, that said, I think this is for people that, if you if seen like Fists of Fury, you know the depending on which version you've seen, you know Fists of Fury or Chinese Connection, but the 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 Kung Fu craze Bruce Lee movie, but with the Japanese versus the Chinese school. If you've seen that movie, if you've seen movies like that, if you've seen like King Boxer, that type of thing, this would be a good movie to go and check out. Do you know what I mean? Because it gives you a sense of the roots of that subgenre. Um, and like Dion said, if you're a Jimmy Wang Yu fan. You know, you might like this. If you're a Loli A fan, it's probably good to see too, because this is one of his early villain roles, I think, right? Like, mm -hmm. I don't remember when he first started doing big villain roles, but this is one of those ones where, you know, you, you first start seeing him in that kind of a role. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, beyond that, it, you know, this is to somebody who is watching it today, it's, it is going to have sort of a standard kung fu movie look because of, you know, the, the history of the genre so 
so you know it's not it's not it's not something that I think people will see and uh, you know it'll you know it, it'll 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 only impress you if you have some familiarity with the genre already. I'll put it that way: some familiarity with the, the actors, that kind of thing. Um, but I think it's worth checking out. It's on Netflix. Or not Netflix. Was it Prime? This Prime. was on. Yeah, it's on Prime, so you can see it on Prime. Um, you know, and, and what I would say to people is, I think if in terms of quality of these kind of movies, if you want to see a better quality kung fu movie, I might go with King Boxer first because I kind of like King Boxer better than this one, or even like One Armed Boxer or something kind of like you know a little more crazy. Uh, but but this is definitely worth checking out. Um, and yeah, so I don't know any any additional thoughts before we 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 head out here, Dion, or have we covered everything? No, I think we've covered everything. All right, so so yeah, so again, it's uh, the Chinese boxer. It's nineteen seventy. Uh, I think it's also called Hammer of God. And, yes. Uh, and uh, which I think is a little. I don't know, that doesn't, that title doesn't quite fit this movie. <laughs> uh, no, the Chinese boxer is right on the nose. Um, so, so we'll be back next week. We'll cover another week. We'll probably be covering something more Wuxia related. And uh, until then, we will talk to you later. God!